welcome to my Halloween first. And I'm Ian Anderson. And I'm Scott Anderson. And today I want to talk to you about my epic fail with the T5 LED combo lighting I tried implementing. Now, I still believe that T5s and LEDs work great together. But the way I did it, I failed epically and killed a bunch of corals and really just mm -hmm. devastated my tank. So come check out my failures and how I'm attempting to fix it. When I first turned the blue lights on, I was so excited. The tank looked amazing. The colors on the corals just popped. So I did something I knew better than to do and I ran the lights for about 10 hours. And, the, and they don't look that bright. Blue light is so deceptive to the eye as to how bright it really is. So of course, I did something stupid and I killed a whole bunch of corals. Hardest hit were my bird's nests. I had two really large green bird's nest colonies that just died. The little piece you're looking at right here, that's all that's left of that really big green one I had that took up that whole rock. It turned brown and then the flesh fell off the skeleton. I tried flagging it and gluing the frags around the tank to try to save it, but it was too late. That one was done. I also had another good size frag here and up here. Now this was a little different type of bird's nest. This was the type that when you give it high light, it starts to turn pink. And it started to turn pink. I thought it was gonna be okay. But it was too much light, too fast. It started turning pink, then brown. Flesh started falling off, so I moved it, and of course, it died. My only surviving bird's nests are these nice, green, really bushy ones. But they look like crap. I've got two of them mounted in lower light positions in my tank, and I hope they make it. There is a chance that the flesh will kind of recover and the polyps will re-extend and they'll be okay. To fix these problems, I'm gonna change the way I have my lighting set up. When I installed the T5s, I installed them wrong in my opinion. I put one set of lights on the left and one set of lights on the right. And that made sense from a lighting installation perspective. But from a tank light adjustability, it doesn't make any sense because then you're only lighting the left side of the tank or the right side of the tank. So what I've done is I've rewired it so I can turn the center two lights on independently from the outer two lights. And that is going to allow me to have a better look in the tank and better control of how I turn the lights on and off so I can adjust intensity. I used a Lux light meter to test the total amount of light coming off of my lights. Now this is not a PAR meter. A PAR meter is a much better meter, but I don't actually own one. So I used the Lux meter to test the total amount of light coming off of just the LEDs, and that's getting about 315 times 100, but for this, it's 315 on the gauge, and that's what we're gonna go with. So with two T5s on, I got around 515, 500 Lux, depending on where I placed it in the tank. With all four T5s and LEDs on, I got around 650 to over eight lux on the lux meter. Now this is why my corals are stressing. You can see how much extra light they were under. They were under 300-ish for a couple of years and then overnight, I stuck them at over 800 for a long period of time, like 10 hours a day. I'm now at two T5 bulbs running for four hours a day. Hopefully the added brightness and blue color is gonna give me good colors out of my SPS and the lower corals, but not burn everything to death. So I admit this is a huge mistake. 
I try to keep it real on my channel. When I screw up, I'm happy to show people because I guarantee other people are going to make this same mistake. When you bring on new lighting, go slow. Don't do like me. So thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. If you like what I do, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And there are many more videos to come.